Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to uh, clean and refurbish the push rods and lifters for my engine of my 1967 uh, Lotus Europa Series 1. As you can see, I've already cleaned all of these. You can see that the push rods are very dirty and a little bit rusty. They're full of caked on oil and this is how they look once they're cleaned. And once they're all clean, we're going to test them for straightness and to see if um, they need a little bit of work at the machine shop. So I've gone through all of the steps. You can see this is a push rod that hasn't been touched. This one I've cleaned with the coarse uh, scotch bright paper. It's in a medium. You can see that the shine is slowly coming back. This is the, um, the fine scotch bright. You can see there's a little bit of shine. And on this one, we polish this with a metal polish. And this will be the, the final surface finish. So I'm going to go through and put all of the push rods so they look like this one. And then we can put those to the side and to check for straightness. Um, but they're all pretty straight, so normally they'll be okay to reuse. All the push rods have been cleaned and polished, as you can see. They're really nice and shiny. So now we can test them uh, for straightness, but they're pretty good. So I'm not doubting that these will work just fine. So now we can do the same treatment to the lifters. So we'll start off by polishing these a little bit. Again, I'm going to do the shafts and the heads of the lifters with the fine sanding pads and then the neck here which has all of the rust on it we'll do this with uh, the coarse or the medium grit and then we're going to use the metal polish to polish everything up again and hopefully they'll look just as good as these and then we can check the head for straightness but I don't think that um, there will be a problem because they don't look very worn uh, but otherwise they'll need to be resurfaced so I've already done uh, seven of the eight lifters and you can see that on the shaft there's a really dull spot in the middle and that's um, where all the wear occurs so I use um, a really fine surface prep pad like this and you sand them you scuff it up try to polish it up and then I use my autosol metal polish with the pad and then I use the autosol polish with a rag and then you can see and uh, we can get the scuff marks uh, really really good so it, it's almost gone and yeah, my hands are really dirty now so you can see all the stains but um, it's really nicely polished all the way around uh, the only thing that we need to check is to see if this surface is flat on some lifters from other engines uh, the head is domed a little bit to help them rotate however in the Lotus and the, the Renault engines this should be completely flat uh, normally you can see some wear when it's really uh, dipping in so I'm just going to clean the last one and then we're going to check them for straightness and otherwise we need to have this resurfaced a little bit after I cleaned up all of the push rods, uh, they looked really nice and uh, not a lot of wear on the stem um, and the faces of the lifters looked really good. But there was a little bit of wear on there and it is quite difficult to see. If I took a flat ruler and I put it on there and I held it against the light, you could see um, that it was going a little bit concave, that there was some light going uh, in between on the center that the edges were a bit higher because um, the cam lobes 
are wearing on this all the time. So we could see that it was a little bit worn, uh, concave, so these would need to be resurfaced. Um, now, I could have had this done at my uh, cam shop, uh, but it's a little bit expensive for just facing the lifters. So, um, because the Renault lifters are quite easy, they are completely flat on top. Uh, most of the lifters, especially for uh, American V8 engines, have a small crown on there. They're a little bit uh, convex to aid the turning on the cam lobes. But the Renault lifters should be completely flat. So that's a bit easier to do at home. So what I have here is this is a mirror, so a glass sheet, and I have a couple of them. Um, and I've just stacked these together because it's a little bit sturdier. And the way that we're going to uh, reface these is actually quite easy. I've done already done three. So we're going to take lifters and I've just used a permanent marker to tie the tops. Uh, you can use some uh, machinist tie but I don't have it. So just using some permanent marker just to tie the top of the lifters. That way we can see uh, where we're removing material. And I started by using um, some 600 grit but uh, because it's not that coarse it took really long time. So this is a 320 grit sheet of sandpaper and the mirrors are completely flat surface so now we're going to start um, sanding the uh, head of the lifter and it's especially important that you're going to keep it completely flat because we want it to wear completely perpendicular to the shaft so we're going to keep this flat and to start by using a figure eight shape and it's easy to see that you're going to sand on the edge but not in the middle, so now it's easy to see that um, it's a little bit concave on the center. So now we're going to repeat this in the figure eight pattern. Sometimes I do a little bit of back and forth, but I completely uh, turn the lifter on the side so that I'm not doing it in the same direction. So I can get some even wear. And I'm going to repeat this until we can see that the blue is getting smaller so that we're completely flattening everything. So I'm going to repeat this. I'm not sure if you're able to see this, um, but we've sanded quite a bit, but we still have a little bit of the blue in the center. And also, um, if you can turn it against the light, you can see that where I've sanded is dull and the center is still very shiny. So we're still not really removing everything and if you let the light reflect on it you can also see that's a little bit uh, concave in there. So we're continuing um, as we're doing this we can see that the circle in the center will shrink until uh, all the scratches are completely all around. This one I did later and you can see that it's flat. We still have one spot in the center but it's sanded off but we can see that's a little bit darker. You can also see that the circle underneath um, has a different color but it's completely flat. On the first one that I did I sanded it until most of the color was gone but if I uh, reflect it against the light I can still see it a little bit. But I sanded quite a lot off of this one. Um, I had to sand off more than I'd like to get it completely flat. Um, I should get these uh, tested for harness to make sure that these are still okay. Um, otherwise um, we need to get these hardened again. So I'm continuing sanding with this one and I'll check in with you once we're a little bit further along. We're not all the way there but we can see a difference um, that it has become a little bit less deep, a little bit shallower. You can still see a shine of the blue, but not by much. But we can see that between here and here, there's a circle that's quite a bit shinier 
than the edges. That's because this is still a little bit deeper. So we're going to continue sanding until we can see the edge creeping in. This is the contact surface on the cam lobe because the lifters are um, not directly on the lobe but a little bit next to it. So it's catching on one point and completely turning the lifter with every revolution. So we're continuing until we can see the circle disappearing. We're one step on. Um, now the surface is starting to get some uniformity. Um, when we turn it into the light, and it's really difficult to see on video, but if I turn it with my overhead light, I can see that there are some grooves in there in the centerpiece, while the rest is really uniform and nice and flat. So um, I'll need a little bit more sanding, but I'm going to switch from the 320 grit to our 600 grit, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing until uh, all of the grooves are all, are gone, and we have one flat uh, lifter surface. We've come to the stage that we can still see a small circle on there. So we have a little dot in the center and then there's a little circle around. And everything is sand smooth. If I look into the light, uh, I really cannot see a difference in reflection. Uh, all of the grooves are out. We can just see the discoloration a little bit that's in there. Um, I do think it's just a little bit of discoloration underneath the surface. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to recolor our crown a little bit. We'll let it dry for a minute and then we'll uh, redo it again just to check if it really is completely smooth what I think that it is. Okay, so we can see that within a few strokes all of the marker is completely gone. So while we still have a little bit of discoloration underneath the surface, it's fine. If we look it into the light, I really cannot see any difference in reflection. Um, so what we're doing next is I'm going to take away the 600 grit and this is a thousand grit. I'm going to polish it a little bit. And then we'll take 1200 grit. Like so. And once I've done all the lifters, we're going to hand polish this to make it perfect. If we take our ruler now and we check, we cannot see any light escaping. So this lifter is completely flat as well. It's number four. So I've done four and now we're going to do the other four as well. After I've completely resurfaced all these lifters, um, they're completely dead flat and I also, also polished them so you can see how shiny they are. And now um, the only thing that's left to do is to have these tested for hardness. Um, I suspect that they will all be okay. Um, but we need to test them to be sure um, not to damage the cam or the lifters uh, when we're actually going to run them in the car. So um, they agreed to regrind one of my original camshafts and while my camshafts were there they also tested my uh, reground lifters um, for hardness. So I picked this up a few weeks ago. So these are my reground lifters and 
I have to uh, coat these in a little bit of um, oil because they started rusting a little bit to, from being in storage uh, because they're bare uh, steel and normally they are coated with engine oil in the engine so now uh, I really have to uh, take care of these uh, as long as they're not assembled but uh, they all checked out so the hardness is okay um, the shape is correct so I just need to make sure that these uh, don't rust before we put these in the engine we're almost done with our cylinder heads now there uh, is one thing that's a bit of an issue these are our uh, reconditioned lifters and these are the lifter bores now normally these should uh, go in there quite easily and they have to be able to turn and I checked my other cylinder heads because this is one of five that I have and this is not the cylinder head that came uh, off the engine which uh, I got the lifters from and in most of the other heads the lifters will turn freely but in this one they're really tight you can see I can put them in but they're stuck about halfway this one I can get it a little bit further but it's not like it should have should be they're all always stuck at some point so um, we have to do something about that these lifters are 12 millimeters in diameter On the stem, you can see 11.95, and this is the standard size. You have two oversized uh, sizes of lifter, but this is the smallest size. So, what we have to do is we're going to um, hone the lifter bores until all of our lifters fit. So, you can see some of them will go in a bit easier than others these are all the lifters we'll now <clears throat> number them um, to make sure that they go in the correct position and the way that we're going to hone these is by using uh, these little honing brushes so they're, they are uh, 12 millimeters in diameter so they are the correct size and they are coated with some uh, sanding grit. This is a 120 grit. And I'm going to try to carefully hone all of the lifter bores to make sure that uh, it will fit. So we're going to lubricate the lifter bore. And our honing stone and we're going to go carefully slowly in and out and we're going to repeatedly try to see if we can get it in far enough you can see that it's already way better than before and this is just after the first pass so I'm going to keep doing this um, continuously until we can get them in uh, really smoothly and until the correct depth and there's no play in, in any of these so I, I don't have to um, be careful for too much wear because the, the bore is really tight so um, it's working and I'm really happy with it so we're going to take these out again I'm going to continue um, holding the lifter bores just another thing of WD-40 and I've gone to a bit higher speed on the drill it seems to work much better gotten a lot more progress uh, 
the first one and the second one are about the same height. The third one goes a little, a little bit deeper. Fourth and fifth are the same height as the first and the second one. Then five and uh, six and seven will go in the full length and eight sticks out a little bit further than the rest. So I think it needs a little bit more. Uh, I'll go at it from the top to see if that makes a difference. I would have really liked to get in all the lifters as far as I could. Um, lifter number three, six and seven are in all the way, so past the counter bore. And that means that they have all the free movement. All the other lifters are stuck at the bottom of the counter bore. So I cannot get them past that point. I don't really think it's a problem, but I'm going to investigate a little bit further why uh, I cannot get them past. I found out what the issue was. The actual um, honing brush is a little bit tapered. So we need to get in from the other side so that the top of the bore is also getting honed properly. I've just continued um, honing all of the bores and now we can see that they're all completely in there. So they can go in all the way. So now I'm, I'm really certain that um, the lifters will go in all the way to get the correct valve lift. That they're a little bit um, hard to get out doesn't really matter because we have really a lot of spring pressure on um, on these lifters. At full lift, we're talking about uh, about 80 kilograms of pressure on there. So um, if they they won't be able to get stuck in the back of the bore because there's a lot of pressure on there. So um, this is the the final yeah, machining bit that we have to do on the cylinder head. We'll need it to measure some things, um, but lifters and valves are all okay now. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, we we'll, can put things to the side until we need to measure this for pistons and to uh, get our valve train, so our, our rocker arms all in there. But we'll have to restore these first. So this is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. And if you have any questions or comments, post them below. And I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.